This project is going to be about how to build a TV tray. I built this TV tray because I wasn't satisfied with the trays that you can buy in the store. They just cost way too much and there wasn't enough space. My wife and I always wanted a TV tray that you can actually put a full meal on, which basically consists of a plate, a cup, and maybe a bowl of salad. And what I did with this tray was I actually made it large enough in order to hold a full meal for each person. Also, your legs are not cramped in between the tray. You can actually relax and just let your legs go where they normally would go in front of you without having the wood pushing them in. Okay, so let me give you a quick rundown of how the bottom of it is going to be laid out because this took the longest amount of time for me to figure out what works right since I made this from scratch. You're gonna have two side pieces right here and here. They're both going to be 16 inches long and you're gonna have screws countersunk down in at 4, 8, and 12 inches along the way. You're also going to have one inch from the end on each side you're gonna drill a hole large enough for the mounting hardware to go through. Now I have it drilled out on both sides just in case I ever want to switch sides of the way the legs are facing or if something happens to the wood, you know, random things happen. These pieces are going to be six inches long with the screws countersunk in one inch on each side. This main piece is a half an inch thick solid oak. I have it routered down a quarter of an inch so that it overlaps with with the, the legs coming in and out. It makes a good solid firm position. It's also a great place to actually grab it. It's definitely strong enough. But that is 16 inches long so the difference between this piece to this piece is going to be 16 from the ends which matches the 16 on these ends. Now the legs themselves, the ones that you buy in the store, I always felt were just way too short. You're, you're basically eating off your knees which defeats the purpose of having a tray. So I made mine two inches longer. Each leg is approximately 30 inches long to begin with and then we cut it down from there. Now I have it held together in between with three quarter inch solid oak rods in between the inner legs which slide quite nicely underneath that folds down with no issues. Now there are two different ways you could build this. You can use the rod up at the top that's always a must. I have a rod down at the bottom as well and it, it gives adequate support since it's three quarters of an inch but if you want something a little bit stronger you'll want to use a piece of wood just like this for your bracing at the bottom and screw it in from the sides. I wanted the nice flush look and it to be functional and it, it works just as fine. It's just a personal preference that you have. Now each leg is going to be, let me pull this up here for you, there's going to be drilled at 15 inches so I drilled the holes at the exact same time. That way, if there was any imperfection in my measurements or the drill just kicking off to the left or the right, it all matched up. Now one thing that I did notice, if you're not cutting this wood fresh, you know, from an 8 inch piece, if you're buying it this width, which I did, typically when you buy them from Home Depot, they're not the best quality cuts. I actually have this leg, these two legs right here, and the two legs on the other side are actually different thicknesses as far as width. Now it's so minute that you might not think it's an issue until you fold this back down and your chair or your tray is laying flat. Then you'll see that you actually have a sixteenth of an inch worth of a, a lip right here and it's not smooth. 
So when you have multiple trays, that can cause an issue. Now in between where the bolts are at, I actually put two washers right in between. I'll show a picture of that. At each place where there's an attachment point, there's two washers in between. That way, the washers will move amongst themselves instead of digging in and cutting into the wood. If the washer on one side actually gets stuck to the leg, the other washer will still move freely because it's metal on metal. So everywhere I have that, that one creates spacing and two makes it easy for them to maneuver. Now for the top piece, I actually cut it 19 inches deep by 24 inches wide because I wanted the larger tray. Now this wood right here is not solid oak. This is oak plywood. But I edged it with a nice solid oak edging. And when you finish it correctly and trim it up, you almost cannot tell the difference. There is a slight difference, but as far as eating it, it provides a nice even surface with a little decorative edge for you. So one thing that I found very beneficial when making the legs and cutting any type of solid wood that you need both sides to be perfectly finished. If you're not using a table saw, it's best to make a zero clearance fence. And this one's not perfect, but it works amazing. That way I cut all my pieces vertically. That way I don't get blowout on the back versus in here, which is literally about a half an inch to three eighths of an inch. When you get all kinds of blowout, it just, it's a waste of your money to, to not make one of these. And if you're making one of these, most likely you have some MDF lying around or can get your hands on a piece. Typically only $5 from Home Depot. So I'm going to mark the first piece at 30 inches. Alright, so just to clarify some of the measurements and markings that I've made. It's one inch in on each side of these. One inch in on each leg on both sides. One inch in on the two center pieces. One inch in on both sides of these legs, obviously. And then you also have one inch in on here. Now on each of the two outside pieces, it's four, eight, and twelve. I measured it four on both sides and then changed it up to eight and measured it from both directions to get the perfect center mark. And then the inside of here is going to be three. That's where this is going to actually screw into place. That way I can pre-drill it without having any splitting. Alright, so what I've done now, on the two center pieces, for the left side and the right side, which are going to be your cross supports, I cut a hole one inch down for the rod, the three quarter inch rod to go in on both sides. What I need to do now is I marked one inch down, three quarters of an inch in. I need to drill a hole and I'm going to use a template and use some double sided tape or template tape to hold this down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my flush router bit and I'm just going to router off the rounded edge. You need this rounded edge so that the legs will be able to fold up without binding up against the top surface of the tray. 
Thanks for watching part one of the TV tray video build. If you like this video, please click the like button down below. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Subscribe to this channel to see the next upcoming parts to this video build and to see more upcoming projects that I have planned. Thanks for watching this video.